Hi all, welcome to Show Studios Roundup series. We're going to be talking about Okachur Spring Summer 20 and all that's gone down over the past couple of days. Um, we were chatting just before the cameras turned on and we really feel like it's been a kind of human versus nature couple of days at Couture. Lots of designers were looking to gardens and florals, which I know doesn't sound groundbreaking as I say it for Couture, but um, done in really innovative ways and kind of science and animals and creatures and florals and flowers. Um, and then some people were looking at kind of human nature, human behaviour, different characters, dreamscaping, escapism, um, and a few had a bit of an overlap. Um, let's start with the far, far kind of science and nature, which is Iris, who really looked at these kind of micro, 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 micronisms? Microorganisms. Microorganisms. <laughs> micro it's been a long day. Micro <laughs> microorganisms kind of in the bottom of the sea and the different um levels of human ner the nervous system and how that kind of connects with those microorganisms. Um and all these beautiful shapes, different silhouettes, different amazing craft that she does. Um and I kind of love it when she mixes the human and nature together. I mean yeah. it's something she does quite often. Yeah, and I think she I think she does it so well and so seamlessly that actually the things that come out onto the runway don't seem human or natural at all. <laughs> they're another species that totally, you know, they're so, so, so far beyond even what your eye can recognise as, mm. you know, at no point are you thinking, oh, I love that sleeve on that iris dress because it's yeah. one, it's a vision and it's totally new yeah. and it really takes readjusting to your eye. I mean, we're lucky enough that we actually sometimes get Iris Van Herpen pieces coming in and out of the studio and that's when you start to get some level of understanding on them really, it's when you get to really interact with them. But she is such an incredible showman and you know, she had these really beautiful light structures mm. at the show and you know, all this stuff and the, with the shoes and the hair and the makeup, all of it comes together to create this vision of another another species another world another yeah time. and you almost feel like you're post-human when you put on her garments so you've gone you've gone from human to taking on an entirely new creature once yeah. you once you put on these garments they're incredible well because also obviously we're talking about kind of the psychological effect of wearing her clothes but physically nature interacts very differently with her fabrics because they're so light they're so you know they have all the all these techniques put on them that like a small gust of wind will send some of her dresses kind of shoot all the sequins and rippling. Um, yeah rippling and all of this stuff that you interact with the world differently in her dresses and yeah. I mean not many designers can say that they can say that it gives you power but actually to kind of enhance the elements <laughs> it gets you like that's incredible yeah truly um she's got a really interesting merge between kind of literal merging of human and nature but there's been a really nice adaptations of that idea over couture a um, really good example of that is Chanel who mm. decided to pay reference to um, Gabrielle's um, upbringing at a nunnery a monastery even I'm not sure where it was in France um, but the whole of the Grand Palais was transformed into a beautiful garden, kind of rustic garden, um, and it was paying on it to her childhood, but also the kind of wonderful garden that she grew up in, which yeah. is amazing. So we have a little bit of nature and a little bit of human there. Um, but really interesting collection, I thought. Yeah, I mean, very, very hard. And before, the, before we found out that that was the reference, um, you know, it's these really monastic coats, is the um, images if you look at them online very very sharp for um, even for Chanel mm. but actually when we went to the showroom to see them they are sumptuous it's so soft and gorgeous and the understanding of the craft and the Rue Cambon Atelier you know there's a jacket actually a full look that's made out of sequins piled flat on top of each other and then hand embroidered to make this weight weaved texture it's almost stuck like tetris yeah yeah and then even and even the um finishing is in that and then another one is again kind of tiny little ombre sequins and then with big base stitching over it. i mean i can go and f i could do a whole <laughs> i could do one of these <laughs> just me to camera talking about it but i mean actually what uh, what originally looks very hard and kind of very um authoritative mm. is actually incredibly soft and incredibly personal to the wearer Delicate too. which I guess is kind of anyone's childhood especially yeah. if it was um, as hard as Gabrielle's was yeah what I loved as well is seeing these dresses that look as you say quite dense and then seeing them up close you realize there are the most tiny detailed flowers 
that have a beautiful kind of ornate black lining. I've never seen anything like it. No, really. But that kind of duality of kind of hard human personality and then coming in close and seeing that that delicate kind of natural nature floral um, motif was just really impressive. I'm quite pleased with that collection from Virginie because I've not been that keen on her Chanel so far and this collection kind of cemented um, that this is a really interesting path for Chanel to be taking, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I to totally agree. Um, we also had Valentino, who is very did. much, very much looking at human nature, the human condition, dreams, dreamscapes, um, what divides us, what connects us, mm -hmm. um, and weirdly or not at all, it was partly sex. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of sex, a little bit of eroticism. <laughs> um, done, done in a really, really gorgeous way. We said in our review mm. that you know this isn't kink. This is just this um, kind of intellectual um, eroticism and this inner or exuding eroticism of just the hint of an opera glove or, mm. you know, the um, flash of seeing a very low cut dress at the back. Um, just kind of these hints towards sexuality and in a really, really beautiful and I would hope empowering way. And I think it I felt think like it an was. inner power. Yeah. It felt like, I mean, often you get that with Valentino show that it feels really powerful, but this felt. Um, just like a true, like a real kind of commanding power, um, and you could totally got that from the cuts you mentioned and um, the side splits and some diamantes and the finish with the op gloves, as you said. Um, but yeah, a little bit move away from the effeminate Valentino that we've been kind of lo loving and learning about over the past couple of collections, but still effeminate, just a little bit more um, not strong because it's always been strong, but just with a slightly tougher edge ever so slightly <laughs> <laughs> ever so slightly um also uh couture house that's looking at slight tough edges is Givenchy. um they did a really wonderful merging of kind of human and nature in the sense that they were looking at kind of three different gardens well claire white keller was looking at three different gardens um Sissinghurst, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, the Monk's Orchard, which is where Virginia Woolf used to go um, on a retreat to write, and the orchard there, um, and also um, Givenchy's uh, getaway in south southern France. So beautiful references to nature, which is quite interesting for Claire, I think. Mm. Um, but then also given her, given her slight edgy twang, so sock sock boots in a slightly off neon orange, or really short cropped hair on the models. Um, even the first three looks with this super monastic suiting which kind of mirrors what we saw at Chanel actually um, and all of this is kind of in reference to writing and places to places to find solace places to escape um, it was there's a beautiful quote about the collection which was from a woman to from from women to women so it was kind of looking at women looking at the creativity looking at gardens as escapism and then having Claire put all that together and offer it to women yeah. which is really emotive I think I think it's exciting to see her kind of look in a broader sense because quite often with the collections that I've seen from her, which are brilliant, the reference points have been different cultural movements or subcultures mm. or locations. I mean, last Women's World was New York. Um, there was definitely lots of kind of um, punk stylings in the last couture with the really brilliant wigs, I can't remember <coughs> the name of the hairstyle. Mm. So I think it's really exciting to see her kind of look at a broader approach and again, just kind of keep keep on keeping on with keeping Givenchy fresh and you know and exploring and expanding her um vocabulary there within that house yeah especially the floral detailing very very impressed with that one um Galliano <laughs> Galliano from Ajela probably the most human out of the lot that we're going to be talking about yeah I mean that is always just kind of a rip ride through the last six months of um John and his team's mind and this time we were really really looking at kind of the bourgeoisie and these um learn inherent gestures within clothing mm. that are so so well known that you don't realize them so you know the re the way we don't cut and we don't question a suit or a jumper for the way that it is because that's just the way that a jumper is mm. and it was really pulling that into question but this was very much looking at the man-made looking at kind of social constructs um, I mean, it was looking at a lot of things. I would recommend anyone listen to the podcast. <laughs> to the podcast, yeah. Um, but, you know, that really... And that was really felt. And it was optimistic, but it was also cautious. Mm. It was a really love, It was a really nice mixture of both, I feel. Yeah, I agree. And some of the techniques used were just phenomenal. And actually, technique over the past three days, that kind of honing of craft, celebrating of everything opulent and sumptuous, yeah. which are the words we've been saying regularly over these... <laughs> 
videos have just been really astounding actually. But I also think that it's obviously craft is the kind of backbone of couture mm. but actually uh, openness with sharing your knowledge and talking about it um, you know people will of, people have for years in Couture have always said oh yeah this is an amazing technique we've done but now they talk about the studio they tell you what they're interested in what they've been learning mm. I think it's partly to do with social media because you now have before just saying you can't really describe how to make a really beautiful embroidery in text but now there's a platform to share mm. these videos which do actually incredibly well and Chanel and all these places um, do make lots of videos about their Couture and how it's made so there seems to be this kind of interest in it and I'm really excited to see that because personally it's one of my favourite things to watch is yeah, kind of the Sage doing Chanel's embroideries or yeah, yeah exactly really interesting um, some other little notes that we picked up on over the couture um, is Celebration of Women we had that at Dior um, with Judy Chicago set I believe mm. um, with lots of amazing um, slogans and a, kind of a celebration of all things women and also Alexis Mabee where he stripped the entire collection into white which was an entire collection of bridal looks essentially um, but the idea of doing that was to kind of empower the woman by reducing it right down so kind of two really interesting um ideas looking at the woman and also a few notes on sustainability this season. yes and i mean it's 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 really important to be talking about it and actually as i was saying in i think the margella review if you look at couture as kind of the pinnacle of your business it's the best place to talk about it and work top down um however it's also it's also the couture business is so unknown mm. to so many of us kind of the inner workings of it we actually don't know the sustainability of couture and I don't think we ever will no. um, but the big news of the week was Jean-Paul Gaultier yes. and he closed our week so I feel like he should close our review yeah. our round up our round up <laughs> um, yes I know very sad but exciting and wonderful but um, Jean-Paul Gaultier's last couture show as far as we know <laughs> um, so 50 years of Jean-Paul Gaultier celebrating tonight it was just a raucous affair of all supermodels, superstars, amazing best hits of everything that is Gautier, live music from Boy George and many others and it was about a two hour phenomenal <laughs> affair with the Gautier fans absolutely losing their mind because yeah. it was just um, a run through the entire archive in the best possible way. Yeah, I mean we had Madonna, uh, Madonna's comb bras reworked, we had metal breastplates, we had Erin O'Connor in that amazing black silk gown that pulls oh, out the bottom. Fantastic. Karen Elson, Carly Cross, I mean, Bella, both the Hadids actually. Mm. had everyone. And it was just such a celebration of this fashion that has gone out of style, not only into the clothes, but as you know, the models posing at the end of the catwalk and interacting and having fun and blowing kisses and throwing their sunglasses into the crowd. Yeah. Um, that has gone out of fashion because it's kind of associated with an old guard and an old fashion that um, our industry's tried to shake off as it's become more open and approachable, which I do agree with. But um, that celebration of clothes actually never had to leave and it's so lovely to have it on the catwalk one last time. I know, absolutely. I think that's a real nice note, note to end on. <laughs> we missed you go to already. <laughs> um, thank you guys very much for watching. If you want more in-depth um, reviews and information on each of the shows that we've mentioned um, head to Show Studio where you can see our live reviews there 